Oh, yeah, hi, yeah, hi. And the great vast lake with its silvery waves is welcoming me here every morning. And as I was just calling and dancing to the goddess of the winds, the Epera and the goddess of the waters, Okania, that is today's such fantastic hmm, intimacy with her because we are only we both of us, we two together forever. And then at 9.56 suddenly from above me left above my left ear suddenly I hear hopsha 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 and four swans flown over me and in this fresh morning silvery and gray and blue light it was it was fantastic you know? oh and so we are reborn again hey the great secret of the shamanistic union with the elementary forces is that you are like water like wind like the sun and like the earth like the stars like the elements continuously changing continuously changing oh and so even in the night when you sleep and if you're tired in the evening it's normal you close your eyes as the flowers close their leaves as everything is cooling down and then you are reborn again in the morning and everything is the same yet different so that Nietzsche was not exactly right when he postulated his philosophy of the eternal return of the same it's actually the eternal return of the similar every day the earth is turning and the sun is coming out and the waves are running but they are always similar are not the same there's a constant flux going forward 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 without ever stopping and so even you are moving forward every day you're different you're different every day and you must enjoy you can enjoy these changes changes but yesterday for example i made a very strange mistake i was at the university the day before yesterday and I forgot uh, my electric battery charger there. So I said, okay, I must go there in the morning right right now. Which is never do, never do. In my uh, 15 years of study, so some, somehow I very rarely was there in the morning. Because morning belongs to my goddesses, so to my elementary forces. And what did I do? I just plucked out this, oh, this was there, this was already, and I said, just, let's just have a look if there is something, you yeah, know, on my emails, don't just sit down on the computer. And believe me or not, it may happen to every one of you, I stayed there till 5 o'clock in the afternoon, searching and searching and searching, and surfing, yeah. And this is exactly what, what is, is very opposite to what I'm doing here at the lake in the morning, where I just, just, uh, have um, conversations with the elementary forces through my body, constantly moving, breathing, exercising, running, swimming, and then out of that visions are formed, out of that poems or essays or drawings or just talking or just imaginary visions for them. Okay? And so it is this what I read together with the great German philosopher Ludwig Klages I called the mental framework or the matrix or the geist which is present at the university which is present at those systems of communications and representations of reality which all are digital which all really do operate on the freezing of the in ideal case really 
identical interpretation, identical representation of which there was. Oh my hey ho and so I was totally I was so unhappy yesterday. And then in the evening I lay in my car and said, Well, this is all so empty. I have lost a silver cord to my goddesses. And then I listened to the radio, which is, uh, do radio is fine thing so during the evening and night. I listened to the radio and then there was a nice program about a man who went to the North Cup, to the Finnmark. He went also to the extreme north of Norway and he was talking with the local inhabitants, the Sami, are they called and it was such a beautiful description of of the polar light there mm. and of the blue light of the polar night you know for two months in the winter there is no sun but they have a strange blue light and i was i was thinking okay this blue light it must be something great and then there was this peaceful voices of the Sami Aborigines, let us say, of the local population. He, for example, said, uh, we have no word for war in our language. Yeah? There is actually does not exist a concept of that. They never had a war. And so I said, well, oh, I must have been completely wrong since at the university and, and thinking that in the internet I will find the answer to all of my big questions. So I said, let's return to the lake. And here you see it. That is the rebirth. It's the rebirth you can experience if you really give yourself. I was praying late in the night to great but saying, okay, I don't know what is there to do, you know. My friend, my girlfriend, whom I love very much, is, is, is gone, yeah. is disappeared. Yeah even though I tried very hard to reach her and uh, the project of life is somehow in, uh, in, uh, frozen yeah? and I don't know if I'm to stay here at the lake or to go there uh, to the Czech Republic close to her place because the child is going to be born yeah? oh my yeah oh, oh my yeah oh. <laughs> and then I said, okay, let's give it everything to, into the arms of Great Mother. And say, I am just waiting. And it is the great wisdom of the German philosopher Ludwig Lagers, uh, which uh, distinguishes him very much from Nietzsche. And I have been on the Nietzsche trip for four years and I, I am very grateful. But I became healthy, strong, individual, independent, a warrior. In very, very real sense of the word, uh, physically exercising and working, driving with my um, travel home through Germany and working like a physiotherapist and doing a lot of sport and spending each winter in the last three years uh, in the south and Crete and Sicily and, and uh, Fantastic, but there is a great willpower behind all of that, making, achieving, and I have achieved everything. That's true, but uh, I could not keep it somehow. You know, I could not keep it. The flame was burning so strongly that it wanted to go on and on and on and on. And the great wisdom of Ludwig Klages is. Uh, that you become receptive. You become receptive. You become. You just let things happen. But well, well, this is a wisdom that probably a lot of philosophers have had. But he goes into very detailed examination of the acts of mind, acts of consciousness, uh, to prove actually that even those acts are not free that they are okay you are being made so you are being made but if you become a warrior it is 
somehow over. It's finished with writing of poetry, with dreaming, of walking the whole day around the lake, just in kind of dreamy sense. You see everything sharp, you have your vision, you have your position, you exercise, you make it. So I, I have returned back to trying, it's not so easy. If you are a flame, you are running very, very quickly and you are fighting with the elements, you cannot stop just simply, it must be some time. So this is the wisdom, just, just let yourself be done and it relates directly to the concept of immortality, uh, actually to the non-existence of immortality of the individual life organism. We are, life is immortal itself, you see, it's vegetable life growing all the time, but an individual life carrier, as Plagas formulates it, the individual Lebensträger cannot be reborn in some other world. There are no other worlds. This is the, the very much similar to Nietzsche. There is only this one world, this one beautiful world, and there may be aspects and dimensions of it which we do not yet know and cannot access, but there is a continuum. This is not a vision between here and there and life after death for an individual being does not exist. It, it, it only is possible to prolong your life for quite a long time by means of giving yourself in to the elementary forces. Your body is made of elementary forces, of wind, fire, water, all the functions of your cells, of the millions and billions of enzymes and chemical reactions and osmosis and electric uh, charging and discharging and whatever is there. Uh, going on with the uh, physical elements and chemical reactions down to subatomic levels everything has been tried by evolution of life on this earth for two and a half billion years so you are a great mosaic of all the possibilities that the earth has uh, that the biosphere or great mother of life itself has found uh, best them suitable for life. So, if you simply give yourself to this great force, if you fall, so to say, into the arms of Great Mother and let your body be done, be breathed and be blooded and be pumped and be moved and be digested and so you, everything is happening uh, lights falling into your eyes and visions coming and, 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 and. so there may be that you really become a person who lives for a long long time uh, because it's life your life wants to live you know? the meaning of life is not death the meaning of life is life yeah? And yet, you, what you have to give up is the personal ego. Right? Personal ego is exactly that part of your personality that wants to keep that, that wants to have the routine, that wants to have it secure. The ego is a part of matrix, which uh, uh, Plagueis would say in modern terms, in his terms you would say, uh, e ego is comprised from the soul, which is the positive a friend of the body, which lives uh, in the series of images, images, yeah, pictures, yes, visions, and then it's the second part of the ego is their guys, yeah? okay, the analytical reasoning part, yeah, uh, the ego in the narrower sense part of the matrix which actually does not exist in the real terms as the soul does and the body does yeah? is a kind of uh, a, a, a crossroad of all kinds of rules and um, musts and so and regulations and fears and so and this ego, uh, let us say this matrix ego 
wants to keep everything as it is. Okay, and so it's going to die, nevertheless, and it's going to take the body with with itself and the soul with itself. Actually, Clark has formulates a very uh, intriguing concept of of this matrix ego trying to press itself to squeeze into a space and he found exactly the place where it is in our um, process of um, of uh, perception tries to press itself into this polar in between this polar union of body and soul and made the body mechanic and make the body lose the soul and on the other side to make the soul lose the body separate itself from the body and become her, crazy in a certain sense because in a healthy individual individual carrier of life there are life processes that are part of the biosphere and they one by one produce or uh, produce uh, images in his soul, on the soul of his carrier, okay? So you live and you have mm, visions at the same time. At the same time you may have visions, you have a series of pictures, and at the same time your body reacts to this. Okay? So, and this used to be in the old times, it was used to be even with the perceptions of a real Scenery. So if I look at, the, at these waves and at the silver sun on the horizon and the clouds and the blue skies and the fresh green trees and the Alps on the horizon with the fresh snow on it. So normally, uh, as many in old times, I would at first immediately experience some, some elementary forces, some spirits of the lakes, spirits of the sky and I would really see them, okay? So if the sun would come out and the old, old grease, uh, I would not just see a circular uh, sh disk, shining light, I would see the Helios on his uh, wagon or whatever, with his horses, yeah? Helios. And it's running over the sky. Maybe it would be part this, part that. Then. But we already in our perception see um, mm, only waves, only sky. So, so we have to close our eyes and give ourselves in. And then we may have visions. We may suddenly see that a beautiful goddess is coming out of the waters. And then I would say, okay, this is okay, Anya. This is the elementary force. This is the water itself. This is the water itself, the lake itself, that is coming to me um, on, on a level of, uh, of visions, of imagery, okay? Something that is not possible in other case. And, and I do not claim that this, uh, this, this lake exists like this. So this is certainly not the case that there is somehow uh, a, a, a real female figure of water spirit that comes out. There is something, there is something, there is some level of information of, of life that is not accessible to me otherwise that in this imagery. And then according to my predisposition, according to my habits and experiences, I will see and feel above all in my vision with closed eyes this lake as a spiritual being and it represents to myself uh, this beautiful goddess. It might represent to somebody else as a beautiful god, or to somebody else as, as a dragon It comes out of the waters, somebody else as a um, ship full of wise men, whatever, depending on the mythology of that culture he lives in, on his personal reading and personal artistic uh, inclination. So, 
So this is it. This is the normal, healthy union of body, which at the same time I feel that I exercise here. My feet grow into the ground, my feet grow into the lake, my arms when I stretch them out become branches of the trees that stand behind me, okay, my lungs become full of the clouds and the air, my brain is filled with the light of the sun, so I actually am a continuum, I am not separated from that lake of the spot I'm standing on. Uh, by my skin and then there is the skin and inside the skin there are the sk the bones and the muscles and I somehow uh, uh, transfer the data from the outside world through the reception points in my skin and eyes and nose and ears and I translate it uh, into no 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 I am being lived by I am a continuum Especially when I close the eyes and I exercise Qigong, move slowly, move like the water and then when I meditate I let the skin melt and I became, let the sound of the waves run through my brain like I really feel the waves running from one wall of the skull inside to the other walls it's like these hollow walls and then they penetrate these hollow walls and I become part of the lake and then I may sit suddenly and find myself immersed in the lake okay uh, and, and the water is running through me and then I can find myself up in the branches of the tree and I am just the wind and, and then I can sit inside the trunk of the tree and 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 simply absorb like this uh, the, the soul of that uh, elementary forces of water and tree and stones and air and sun so this is a union of uh, body and soul because my body actually at the same time really physically exists here and I do those exercises so I sit but it is penetrated, it is interpenetrated, interconnected, it is submerged, diffused at the same time in the elementary force of wind, air, fire, water, what you will. And the soul is giving the answer. The soul is living this in images. But when the matrix ego comes, it says, oh yeah, yeah, at nine o'clock, yeah, you should have gone, you should have done this, you should have been at the university, you should have uh, write this thesis, you should have looked into the internet if there is a job, you should have uh, called your girlfriend what is going on and, and, and so the ego tries, remembers how it was, how it was yesterday, how uh, uh, and the ego feeds on this energy of, of, of images wants to it wants to uh, of thought about all it wants you to somehow keep everything as it was you know the ego does not live matrix ego does not experience this beauty of the present moment oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah it is simply what we say envious yeah it's simply envious of this flux of life of beauty and and hmm and so it tries to, you know, make a picture of that and store it in the CD or store it somewhere, you know? And this is its memory and it wants to keep it. And so it is, it is, uh, when, it becomes, when it becomes active, it somehow throws you into the memory of the past and picks up uh, the beautiful moment and let it uh, revolve them, revolve this moment, review them, rethink, reimagine, and it feeds on that, feeds on that. And uh, that's why it's a great truth uh, in it that uh, we should not double, we should not double the experience by um, the media of doubling that is like photographing, taking for example, audio 
you know, so I'm doing now, no? but I am trying to leave a message to my friends and to other people somehow. Well, it, I remember as I was a young boy, I, I looked hungrily for messages like that, you know, books or whatever, films and so I was saying, somebody must know, somebody must know, I would like to learn it and then when I know it, then I will go on and do it. Yeah. So I basically, I may be now at the end of the long, long period of learning or uh, and leaving a trace for me myself or uh, for for me myself uh, what have I done uh, now I'm doing it <whistles> that's beautiful you know? I do it maybe to express myself to those whom I cherish you know? whom I love and who I want to understand what I actually do because I can tell you in all those uh, 15 20 years that I'm on this way I'm I met let us say five six seven people who seemed to know to feel what I'm doing but nevertheless no one could actually experience what I experienced that is the it made me really think somehow this what I call ontological barrier of personality you cannot be somebody else after all you cannot be somebody else and all cannot have always been mm, making me kind of angry and the warrior in me would say well let's see what cannot be done must be tried maybe tried and I can tell you that it is at the end of this process of letting yourself go, dissolving into the elements, becoming the lake, becoming the water, then you then may from time to time like become a different uh, animal or a different person whom you know well, whom you know well intimately and where there is a kind of uh, motivation to do it. And you experience it through many, many years as just jerks, short moments of being kind of uh, moved in space, in real space. Uh, uh, your focus of, uh, of uh, experience is being moved into that other uh, being yeah, into the animal, tree, or person, plant or person, yeah. and then you can experience it. Fantastic! At the same time, similar as when you stretch your arms and keep them open to the sky, and you imagine you feel that your feet are rooted in the earth and you are a tree, then you really have this experience of branch-like. Um, arms and, and fingers that, that open into leaves and you can even stand for a long time or you can move like branches in the wind. Now, this is the secret of Qigong which is the real Qigong that the great masters then exercised always alone in nature and I feel it now after uh, 15 years of very intense exercising that the exercises become independent of whatever is in the book or whatever motions described and breathing is described you become you become part of the scenery you become the waves you become the air and you become like you know it's like uh, standing on the break, you know, on the verge of the first kiss, like when you were 17, like saying, well, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, no matter what happens, I may die, I may be killed after that, but I'm going to do it. So this is what you feel, or, or what you experience when you start to meditate, then uh, when you start feeling like your ego 
is going to dissolve your fear. The fear that something may happen, a door, a trap door may open, you, you may cease to exist, yeah, or there may be a thrashing, okay, a disaster after that, you know, if you do something which, which should not be done, which means a transformation. So there you simply become the elements and you feel the sun on your skin and you feel the waves in your arms and the ground and you become a part of the time-space continuum that forever is going forward every day every night the earth is turning and the moon is moving around the earth and the waves are running and the plants are growing and the stones are stoning they just are stoning the stones and the clouds are clouding and everything is as it is a great secret of the Zen Zen philosophy, Zen experience everything is as it is the mental matrix has disappeared and then what used to write okay and the great ox herding pictures like it has been everything there from the beginning I mean the mind you have is the mind of the Buddha at the beginning when you are being born when you are born fresh and it could become a continuous flow of time and space, morning, evening, waves, eating, digesting, moving, and who we are, we are, and what may be. Those sand people do not see that there is also the imagery of the soul that once you become the part of the lake, of the trees, of the mountains, wherever you are then these elements begin to show themselves in your soul especially with the closed eyes there are some unusual people that can do it with open eyes but it is uh, as Ludwig Clark has proved in his big big block his book book uh, uh, the Geist as with the Sache der Seele as the ego matrix as the enemy of the soul that it is exactly in the process of visual perception that in one specific moment and he goes into very 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 extreme detail that remembers me sometimes of the Abhidhamma studies of the processes of perception visual perception where the ego matrix jumps in and because the human being homo sapiens as a very much a visual being so uh, the matrix ego controls our actual eye vision yeah, in normal cases yeah. maybe only if you are like in love or rather a poet or you have a kind of uh, depression sometimes or a great something that disturbs the course of your life that you can experience such sharp details, such strange, strange day details of, of, of just a piece of paper or a corner of a wall or a bark of the tree which you look from close or just your hand and it is, it is uh, also filled with a deep, deep uh, spiritual meaning, like like uh, the realization, the, the utmost realization of this is it. 
I am experiencing that. That is it. Nothing else. So it, it may happen. Um, that's why why the crisis in the personal life is important. Mm -hmm. But in a normal situation, look at the cities, look at the temple, look at the videos, look at the visual bombardment. Eh? You, you do not see actually what is there. You, you're, you are being, you know, shocked by images. Yeah? And this iconic turn about which we are talking now in philosophy is uh, iconic fall, I would say, because it is not the iconic turn which would be desired, that like uh, a turn to visual creative imagination, yeah? so creative imagination. Yeah? Uh, it is a crashing attack of passive ready-made images from the media cha badek eh? so i must turn back to that former idea that in the moment of this harmony in this moment of the harmony when you're filled with the elements and when you also remember the great good advice of Nietzsche, of Nietzsche, do not fight against that which you cannot love. Just only turn your face away and walk away. The great wisdom, depletion of energy and mystically speaking, if you are warring and fighting against the other side, against the enemy, you have to activate their concepts in your mind. You have to know what you are fighting against. In the moment you are filled with the realm of the enemy to know what you are doing, you already support him, so and you are exhausted. And so, why do you not turn back to the, what I said at the beginning, passive receptive, embracing, falling into the arms of Great Mother, of the water, of the lake, of the sun, and move slowly in this natural elementary life force guiding movement which would exactly the translation of the qigong you know, of, 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 of leading and this is the mystical qigong of being being led being moved by the life energy of the place oh yeah oh yeah oh. and then the images come oh yeah and this is the very sweetest fruit of life of the individual life of the life of a human being it has a mind we have mind we have visual imagery and if you let this imagery be made by the life force, by the lay, and when it then comes to us as a beautiful goddess of the lay, ho ya ho, mount a beautiful ship, she ship she arrives, comes out dressed in this glistening robe and there she may hold a child in her arms so yeah, oh yeah. why should we say in the face of this beauty 
no, no, this is just a making of my mind. I have to, to turn back to serious breathing and count the breathing. And here he comes, the, the tigerish monster and master. And he thrashes your shoulder because he is seen on your face that your lips have become loving and that your face is becoming soft and he interprets this in his uh, serious uh, fighting manner like all oh, you are dreaming oh, no this was the Zen was the art of the warrior of the kendo fighter of the samurai fighter samurai warriors and in their case it was really important that they do not dream so and your head was off but again so they were like Nietzsche at least like Zarathustra or at least like the idea of uh, this overman warrior that was uh, with his willpower and the Zen was a kind of they would achieve this uh, peace of mind I guess and get moving and get exercising but somehow the, the deepest the deepest fundament of why I'm going to do this was a war, a fight there were mercenaries well I must look deeper into that because literally in Zen there is this Wu Wei and there is this poetry and there is this drawings and there is Robert Bliff with his book and there is much a passive receptive in Zen but it may it may um, it may be so that as the various masters of Zen were different characters that some of them stressed is emptiness for emptiness above all and all imagery but I feel as a European and there comes there comes also the idea of uh, Ludwig Klages which is, which is shaking and I am so desperate that the universities here in Germany just omit just forget People like Nietzsche, uh, in very many cases, and above all, they do not, they do not have flags on, on at all. Huh. So, but because what he says is very enlightening, like the concept of the ego matrix attacking a human being, so attacking life, and trying to separate body from the soul, yeah. so that body becomes mechanic and the soul becomes mad when it is alone taken away when the soul is taken away by the ego matrix into this fantastic spiritual realms and does not uh, have solid base in the body it becomes ill so he says the european so the occident uh, is the place where the uh, magic ego attacks the body we are, so to say, bodily oriented. Yeah? Even our great idealistic philosophies are, after all, um, solid stuff. You know, the solid stuff. Whereas in the Orient, uh, the ego matrix attacks the soul. So the soul becomes screaming and forgets the body. So here I say, what I say is this. The way for a healthy European to this is exercise, body exercise, which after all finishes in a spiritual discipline, but the body is all the time involved, yeah? because it will be exactly in that moment where the body returns back to soul, where the body refuses to function 
on according to the rules of the ego matrix like you know i'm going to win the olympic games so i'm going to when i was in the professional sport when i was a young boy i said oh i must work so hard because i had the ego matrix which was implanted by the implanted by the trainer and all the people oh i'm going to prove it i'm going to make it so there was this measurements in training so many hours so this action was repeated okay this fencing so the action was repeated repeated and it became automatic so it was the eternal return of the same in an ideal case yeah? and um, so body becomes mechanic and even in uh, in sexual realm you know what we are being uh, shown and some of the so-called sexual visual imagery is a machine that forever does the same no 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 no, no. we must and also like going to work you know, like body working according to the clock no, no. we must return our body to the elements this is chukong this is all the exercise in free nature that does not have for its purpose the victory and uh, uh, achieving a better time and fighting over and uh, have several more points or so so Olympic Games is totally wrong it's clear yeah? Olympic Games is a Greek idea of uh, competition uh, being the best of Argon no no we want to lead the body back to the elementary forces you know? and then as you bring the body back to the soul the soul starts to laugh and kiss the body and embrace the body and they are both again united and the ego matrix is being pushed out well for Klages, it's important to know it's impossible to uh, change the course of uh, development. Yeah? So the ego matrix will never be uh, besieged, uh, it will never be thrown out completely. So, and I have my own views and have more ideas because. Even though I admire Nietzsche and Clark as you know, this great man, I have never seen somebody here standing at the lake for 15 years every day for five, six, seven, eight hours sometimes. So, what are they doing? Where are they? Where are they? The men who have written the big books, no? They're dead. Okay, so. And so I'm grateful to them that they have shown the way and then someone must come to do it, to do it and do it. And so I stand here at the lake and I'm waiting and exercising.